Fezzan, a legendary desert landscape perforated by tall rocks. It appears to extend forever in the southwest of Libya, mostly without any sign of life. However, Fezzan has not always been as hostile looking as it is today. A closer look reveals flora that has managed to adapt to the extreme climate of the desert mountains. For centuries, the rocks in the Fezzan have hidden an intriguing cultural treasure some of which still remains a mystery to the scientists and archaeologists of today. Who were the first people to settle in this once fertile region? It's hard to believe that this barren rock desert was once a green and fertile paradise until the climate and landscape were transformed by the passage of time. Today, sand and stone dominate the scene. The savannas that were once here now belong to the past. Only rock remains. And within the rock, the remains of a long lost Saharan culture. When the landscape begins to shine in the redness of sunset, the mystic character of the Fezzan is revealed. It is a truly magical place. Due to the remoteness of this land of sand, rock and stone, a fascinating cultural epoch of mankind fell into oblivion for thousands of years. The Fezzan was once the home of a legendary tribe, the Garamantes. The transformation of both climate and landscape becomes obvious in the narrow canyon of Gelta Tashunt that is only a few meters wide. Once the waters of a torrential river flowed through this canyon, its power forming several bizarre and mysterious looking rock sculptures. Every now and then, when there is a short but heavy rainfall, Suddenly, water pours through the canyon and fills the four natural basins of the Gelta Tashunt. Despite the extreme climate 
and harsh environment. The Fetzan has been inhabited for more than 12,000 years. Today, it is mainly the nomads of the Tuareg tribe who live here. The Tuareg are thought to be the descendants of a mysterious Saharan culture, the Garamantes. This ancient Berber tribe once inhabited the entire Fetzan and created a large number of remarkable rock paintings, images that depict life in those bygone times. The Garamantes were first mentioned in written form in the 5th century BC by the Greek geographer and historian Herodot. At that time, the Garamantes controlled Trans-Sahara trade between the Mediterranean coast of Libya and Lake Shad that lies further south. rock walls of the Fetzan also feature paintings and rock carvings that date back to previous epochs. Indeed, the oldest images that have been discovered here are more than 10,000 years old. The theory that the Tuareg are the direct descendants of the Garamantes is no longer disputed among the scientific community. Fetzan was once crossed by numerous caravans. Even today, one expects to encounter a caravan at any moment, but they've become few and far between in this region. Before the landscape became transformed into that of a desert, this region was inhabited by man, and thousands of impressive rock pictures indicate the presence of the former inhabitants of the Fetzan. German explorer Heinrich Barth and his French colleague Henri Duverrier were the first Europeans to discover and write of the archaeological remains of the Garamantes realm. Yet scientific curiosity almost proved to be fatal for Heinrich Barth. Stories of the local Tuareg fired his imagination. So in 1850, he ventured on a solo expedition into the South Libyan Edenen Massif and to what was known as Ghost Castle. According to legend, this area contained numerous mysterious hidden buildings of the Garamantes. But Bart's hopes of finding traces of the perished Saharan culture ended in disappointment. In fact, the German explorer became hopelessly lost in this remote area.
It seemed that this would be his final journey. Bath almost died of thirst. However, a search party was formed and a member of the Tuareg eventually rescued him. For centuries, no European had dared to enter this impenetrable and barren land. Even the local Berber tribes avoided some areas as they feared the supernatural forces and evil spirits that were said to be there. Indeed, some of the rocks do look somewhat spooky. Right up until the 19th century, the Tuareg themselves were something of an enigma, until Bart and Duverrier eventually learned more and more of this fascinating tribe. But it was not until the 1930s that the rock paintings of Fezzan became famous. When Italian archaeologists discovered many ancient pictures in this part of the Sahara. In addition to the impressive remains of both prehistoric times and antiquity, it is also the spectacular landscape of this remote desert area that is of most interest. The mighty rock walls are in wonderful contrast to the gentler lines of the sand dunes in the Vari Atenschel. The magnificent contrast of light and shadow, as well as the silence and the remoteness of this place, create a unique atmosphere, full of exotic mystique. The rock carvings and drawings highlight the magical atmosphere of the dried out river valleys. The Fezzan was the home of the Garamantes. But what kind of role did the rocks play in their lives? And how busy were the caravan routes that traveled through the Vares more than two and a half thousand years ago? How much of these ancient cultures has been lost forever? Some of the answers to these questions have been provided by the Tuareg. This, the most important Berber tribe in the Sahara, knows most of the areas in the Fezzan where the ancient rock paintings are to be found. The first Europeans who met with the Tuareg in the middle of the 19th century were entranced by the myth of the Blue Knights. The custom of veiling their faces added much to the mystique of the Tuareg they also had a rather dubious reputation.
The legendary and mysterious rulers of the desert were said to be savage plunderers. Some of their chiefs were even thought to possess magical powers. The origins of the Tuareg have always been cloaked in romantic speculation. They've been almost as mysterious as the landscape itself. Unlike other Berber tribes that were overrun by the Arabs and converted to Islam between the 7th and 9th centuries, a number of their tribes attempted to escape from their new rulers and even set up resistance against them, at first with little success. The Berbers, who were known by the Arabs as Tavarik, abandoned by God, were forced to withdraw to the remotest areas of the Sahara in order to survive. So the Tuareg were able to maintain their customs, language and social structure right up to the present day. Even now, some of the Tuareg live in the harshest regions of the Fezzan, in a near impenetrable, scorching hot landscape that lacks any form of vegetation, tantamount to being a natural protective barrier against foreign intruders. In almost total silence, the sight of this captivating ocean of sand with its huge waves and gentle forms is truly breathtaking. Each day, the wind creates new shapes. There is little wildlife here, and the Fezzan is far too infertile to sustain most varieties of plant life. Only the most hardy plants have managed to adapt to the demanding terrain and seem to hang on to life by a thread. The shadow cast by a centuries-old tree provides shelter from the blazing midday sun. How many caravans once stopped here in ancient times? Only this tree has the answer. Hundreds and perhaps even thousands of goods-carrying dromedaries and traders most likely once passed by this location. Maybe they were also frightened by the strange-looking rocks and were only too pleased to vacate the area as soon as they could. However, a closer look reveals that the dark rocks are in actual fact the well-preserved remains of a petrified forest. Some of the tree trunks of this fossilized forest are in such good condition that it's possible to read their age rings with the naked eye. An amazing sight. Mm. 
One of the most enchanting regions of the Fezzan is the sand desert of Erg Mursuk. The majestic several meter high sand dunes emerge like mountains from the sand and are in marvelous and colorful contrast to the cloudless blue sky. For many who come here, the sensation of being confronted by the mighty dunes of the desert is a deeply spiritual experience. A meditative atmosphere can be felt throughout the day. And the early morning also offers something special. When the desert awakes once more and the temperature begins to rise. The sight of the seemingly endless undulating shapes of the sand is quite awesome. Sand deserts such as that of the Erg Mursuk are a magnificent natural spectacle. From time to time, various traces in the sand indicate the presence of wildlife, but the local fauna of the Fezzan remains invisible to the human eye. To spot any wildlife at all in the desert requires much patience and a lot of time. Close to the sand desert of Erg Mursuk is the most important historical area of the Fezzan, the Vadi Matkandush. This area owes its reputation to the discovery of a number of large rock paintings by a team of Italian explorers led by Fabrizio Mori. The thousands of years old pictures and carvings indicate that the fauna in the Vare was once far more varied and African than it is today. Thus the famous picture of the fighting cats is not only a symbol of the changing climate and the resultant transformation of the landscape of this Saharan region, it's also a lasting and proud legacy of the Garamantes, the former rulers of this desert. The endless landscape of the desert and its prehistoric rock paintings, countless images that date back to both prehistoric times and antiquity. And last but not least, the presence of the Tuareg have made this visit to the Fezzan a truly memorable adventure.